Welcome back. I'm in the studio right now with Sahara. And what I like to start off with is teaching people how to identify bad photos. What's up everyone? This is Arash. We're here today with Sahara, who's our model for today. And we want to go over how to do a studio shoot and natural light shoot and flash shoot, uh, off camera flash shoot outside. But first we're going to start off with uh, the studio. So I want to go over how to take bad photos first before we take good photos. Because if you can take bad photos, then you can take good photos. So let's start with that. We're gonna start off with a very wide angle so you can see how that looks. So we're gonna have Sahara standing here right now in front of the light. We got a, a Aperture 300D with a light gnome on it. And we're gonna just take some random shots to show you what a bad photo looks like. So Sahara's gonna relax. She's not gonna do any kind of posing because we're gonna pretend she doesn't know how to model even though she does. So we're gonna take some really, really close up with wide angles so you can see how bad these look. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you'll see these popping up on your screen, but we just wanna see some really bad uh, photos. And why are they bad? Because you don't take portraits with a wide angle and I haven't given her any uh, posing instructions yet. So she's very stiff. She looks like a soldier uh, about to go to the Ukraine from <laughs> Russia. So that's why she looks stiff. All right, so we got some shots like that, and it's very flat lighting. Nothing's really special about this. So hopefully it's really hard to make her look bad, but I think we're getting it. <laughs> All right, and we're going to take some like this so you can see how this would look. So can you agree these are pretty bad? Yeah, they're horrible. Yeah, they're pretty bad. Mm -hmm. All right, good. So we got some bad photos. Now let's do some good photos. Now here's a bad photo. Let me put it on the screen. There you go. This is a bad photo for many reasons, but if you understand why it's a bad photo, if you can recreate bad photos, which you should be able to do after, you know, practicing with your camera and lens, you can then move on to create good photos. You can identify good photos. You can identify good lighting, good posture, good posing, um, good angles, all that so that you're intentional. Now, why is this a bad photo? One, I shot this with a Canon R5, which at this time is about a $3,500 camera. So $3,500 camera produced some garbage results. Yes, that can happen. My lens is a wide angle lens. It is a 14 to 35 millimeter, and it is not flattering. It's good for video if you're filming a scene. It's good for landscapes. It's good for uh, real estate, but it's absolutely garbage for people. So I shot this to show that there are lenses that are absolutely garbage, and this is one of them, for people if you're shooting portraits like we are in the studio. So I switched my lens up. Um, I shot with a 50 millimeter. I shot with my 28 to 70. And basically, I wanted to zoom in, get as close as I can uh, while still keeping what I wanted in the frame, meaning if I wanted to get her feet in it, if I just wanted to do waist up, all that stuff. Since we're in the studio, since we kind of wanted to go the fashion route, since she did, uh, she was dressed up from head to toe, it wasn't just like uh, a top where then we would only focus on headshots. I wanted to get a few shots of everything. So that's why I chose the 50 um, and then I switched back between the 28 to 70 as well. Now, posing is also extremely important. If people have never done professional photos, if they haven't done professional modeling, they do not know how to pose and it is your job to show them how to pose. The easiest way is to um, do the pose yourself so that they can mimic you. If you tell someone to move to the right, they may move to the right, they may move to the left, they may not know if you mean your right, their right. So I would start off by saying, turn this way, chin down or chin up or bring the hand by the face. This way they can copy me, they can mimic me and it's a lot easier. So that's how I would start posing. Now, if I were to take a photo from down low, I'm gonna make someone look taller and bigger. If I take a photo from up high, I'm gonna make someone look smaller. So these are things that you need to practice so that you're aware of. If you're shooting like this the whole time, straight on, then they're gonna have the same type of angle, obviously, the whole time. So be aware of how you're shooting. The next key thing is lighting. Now, there's many different ways to light, but it's also intentionally, what are you trying to show? Are you trying to get shadows on one side? Are you trying to do Rembrandt lighting? Are you trying to do uh, something a little bit more creative? We go into that later on, but I want you to be aware of what type of lighting are you trying to do. 
if it's someone older, you may want some some more flat lighting so that you're not uh, you're kind of taking the shadows away from the wrinkles. If you're uh, trying to highlight makeup, you would like maybe a different type of lighting. If you're shooting a Halloween shot and they're dressed as something scary, you may want the light to be lower. Um, traditionally, if you're shooting, um, I would recommend having the light to one side of the camera, so left or right, and up high enough where it's 45 degrees so that if they were shooting from this way, the shadows of the nose would fall diagonal, not directly to the right or left, but diagonally. This is flattering. This is how paintings back in the day were made. The lighting would fall off and it's kind of how it's shaped photography. So for someone to, for you to find someone a photo attractive, flattering, you want the soft light, you want the soft shadow fall offs um, in a regular scenario. Now, again, there are times when you may want harsh light, which uh, means you wouldn't use a soft box or umbrella, you would shoot the light straight on. But for most cases, at least you'll see today, we're trying to get a soft look, we're trying to get a nice flattering look on our model. There are sometimes I do shoot straight on with our constant light, um, but for now, we're gonna focus on soft lighting to get pleasant, beautiful um, lighting. Let's go to the next one. How do we identify good photos?